Hello YouTube, in this video we're going to be going through one of a few applications that we use 3x3 systems for, but specifically in this one, we're going to be looking at writing a quadratic model given some known information. And of course recall that quadratic models or parabolas, okay, can be used to model things such as acceleration or like position under the influence of gravity. So if you were to necessarily know some time and position data already about an object, then one could necessarily plug that into a 3x3 system and work backwards to find a, a like an equation that would model necessarily the position of an object. So that's what we're going to be doing here. Uh, but what we want to do is this. We want to find at least in this sense in general, we say a quadratic equation, uh, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, but whose graph passes through the points say 0, 0, 3, negative 3, and 6, 0. So we would have some data already. What we want to do is set up a system. Um, the way this works is this though. I mean usually when we solve a system we are typically uh, starting with some known information and back solving for some x and y that satisfy the system. But in this instance, what we want to do is this. We want to necessarily set up three equations with three variables in which we already know x and y in each of the equations. The things that we're searching for then are a, b, and c. So the way this works is this. We are going to set up the system by plugging in these uh, say three points that satisfy, we already know satisfy the three equations, and then back solving for the x and y that would cause those three points to be satisfactory to them. So it would look a lot like this. Uh, let's start with the point zero, zero here, where you kind of catch my drift. If we were to plug in, say, zero for every instance of y and, and zero for every instance uh, for x, then we would necessarily get this. We'd say, okay, so zero uh, equals a zero for x squared plus b, plugging in zero for x, plus c, or we uh, end up with this. We say c equals zero. So now we actually, we're going to call this eq1. We say eq number one. And we're going to stick this in our back pockets because we know this. Uh, next equation, we say, okay, so well, the point three, negative three. If we were to plug this in, so we say negative three goes in for a y value. We say Okay, so y equals, or negative 3 equals, a times x squared. In this instance, we have an x value of 3, plus b times x, which in this case is also 3, plus some unknown c. So in this instance, uh, we get the second equation, negative 3 equals 9a, okay, 3 squared is 9, uh, plus 3b plus c. We're also going to stick this in our back pockets because this is our equation 2, eq2. And then our third equation, let's go ahead and rock this guy. We say, okay, well, plugging in now the point 6, 0. We say 0 goes in for y, so y equals, or 0 equals. Uh, we have ax squared, so a times x squared. In this case, x is 6, so 6 squared, plus b times x, which is uh, b times 6, okay, plus c. And so simplifying this, we get 0 equals 6 squared is 36, so 36 a's, plus 6 b's, and a single c. Uh, so our third equation, going in our back pockets here, eq3. Now that we have these three, however, we can set up our system. So uh, this 3x3 three three system would look a little bit like this, and I am uh, arranging these equations in this fashion because I like to see things in what we call row echelon form. We'll talk about that, but we say, okay, so 0 equals, uh, say, 36a plus 6b plus a single c. Our eq2 we had was negative 3 equals 9a plus 3b plus c. And then our last equation, which was simply 0 equals c. So the first thing I want to point out is this. In terms of like our, our ordered triple that we're solving for here, we already are familiar with the c value. We say c is 0. This is very good. As a matter of fact, this means that we have a consistent system, which means it does contain at least one solution. And we're not quite sure it's independent yet, but I can go ahead and tell you that we are going to get a consistent independent answer here. Um, but now what our task is to uh, solve for, say, A and B. So one thing we can do at this point is saying, well, you know, we know with C, equals equal, C is equal to zero, we could actually uh, substitute this into the other two equations. And so we could say this. We could say, well, then uh, it produces a system that says zero equals 36A plus 6B and uh, negative 3 equals 9a plus 3b. The reason why is because we plugged in 0 for the other two constant values of c. So this being said, now we can just solve the system using either elimination or substitution. And it seems to me that uh, it'd be quite easy to eliminate our b's here by scalar multiplying our second equation 
by a negative 2. So now, in terms of showing my work, I'd really like to do it this way. We say, okay, what we're really going to do then is this. We're going to take negative 2 times row 2 and we're going to add it on to row 1. So if we were to take negative 2 times row 2 and add it on to row 1, one thing's for certain, row 2 we did not change. You might say, well, you doubled it. Well, no, we want to leave that alone. But if we were to negative double it and add it to the first row, we say, okay, so negative 2 times row 2, well, negative 2 times negative 3 over here is uh, positive 6, and positive 6 plus the 0 we had in our first row is 6. Now, our first equation now becomes, okay, so negative 2 times this uh, 9a down here is negative 18a, and negative 18a plus our positive 36 a becomes just 18 a, 18, 18 a, and if we were to say negative 2 times this positive 3 b, we get negative 6 b, and adding that on to the first row, we get 6 b. So, you know, we could switch these around, we could say r1, switch with r2, I mean, this is all a lot of esoteric work at the, at the moment here, we don't have to do all this, I just want to kind of demonstrate row echelon form here, uh, but we get this, we get 6 equals 18 a. Not quite row echelon form, but what we can do at this point is we can solve for a by dividing both sides of this equation by 18. And so we say, okay, well then in this instance, uh, produces the result that a equals one-third. And so now that we know a, one-third, and we know c is zero, we could back solve by plugging this into, say, uh, you know, this equation here and solving for b. So we say, okay, well, uh, negative three equals nine times one-third plus 3b. So we have negative 3 equals a third of 9, which is 3, plus 3b. Now solving for b, we get minus 3, minus 3. Negative 6 equals 3b, and last but not least, this produces the result that b equals negative 2. So now in terms of this ordered triple that we found up top, it's nice, you know, in terms of graphical, uh, graphical, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, relevance, I guess. You could say this is the intersection of three planes, it would be at this point. But what we were looking for was an equation to begin with. So in terms of the equation, we said some equation of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And what we were searching for were some ax, excuse me, a, b, and c values. So what we end up with is this. We say, well, then we can model uh, this parabola using this equation. a is one-third, so one-third x squared plus b is negative two, so negative two x and then plus zero, or simply y equals a third of x squared minus two x's. And this would be our equation. So it's just an example of how you could actually use um, a three by three system to solve using some already known data points for your uh, coefficients a, b, and c, and then come up with a model to model that situation. So cheers.